summer is here and there's a lot of new viewers who are staying at the beach. Many of you are probably toying around with the idea of coming to the Ocean Downs racetrack, but you're not really familiar with the standard bread sport. Well, that's why I'm here. Check out this award-winning production from the Harness Racing Hall of Fame that I know you'll love. Timber off that little case and go into the lead. Sometimes they'll get her on the inside. Big again up on the outside. side. Eight two days down on the way of the Come on, tough guy in fourth. You're going to be able to sign the time. That's a race around the turn. Go into the first eight on the outside. Big again. There's magic moving in the mist. Power, grace, and wonder. Magic when they're at the gate. Magic in the thunder. <laughs> I like horses a whole lot. I like the way they stand, like which ones have more muscle and uh, which ones have more speed and temper. I started with my grandfather and my father and then one of me and my, my sons. You see, I think Danny has the natural talent to go on and train and drive. I, I thought I saw it the first time he sat in a sulky. When you grab the lines and you don't fight your horse, you work with your horse, it shows already that you have a little bit of a natural talent, and, and that's what I think Dan has shown us. I trust him a lot because he knows what to do if I get into like a place I don't know what to do. He'll get me out of it. I know he will. I think a horse has a natural grace to it that draws most everybody to it. They're just powerful and, and most people like speed. A horse can develop a, a great deal of speed and, and you can be a part of it, uh, riding them or in the sulky. It's quite a feeling. Where did it start this love of horses? Bred to race against the faiths? Where's it written that ambition won't prevail when glory waves? The roots of harness racing would trace back to a time when everybody traveled by horse and buggy, and they would race one person against another for bragging rights in their community. And it progressed from the back roads racing to a racetrack in New York City and has led to racetracks across the country and then Harness racing took off as a major sport in the 40s with the advent of the mobile starting gate and with the advent of night harness racing, moved it to a prime evening racing and uh, became a major sport at that time. How's it summoned heart of courage from a yearling rough and green? Who's the hand that preps a champion, heals a gamer, weaves a dream? When we're starting with a young standard red, the first thing we do is we put a harness on them and get them used to the feel of the harness. After that, we'll put a bridle on them and again, get them used to the feel of the bridle. At the point where they turn right, they turn left and stop at our beck and call, that's the point where we hook them to the cart. And then, bit by bit, as they get stronger, we start to increase the speed that we go at. Around um, January, somewhere between January 1st and January 15th, we try to hit a three-minute mile. And then we try to drop them maybe at a rate of five seconds a week, if they can handle it. I have to work with my grooms and my second trainers and my blacksmith and my veterinarian. And we're all working towards one common goal, and that's to make the most fit, sound racehorse to get him to the winner's circle. And I try to suit the training method to the horse. In some cases, I may swim one. In other cases, I may tow one. And that's all part of a trainer's job, to figure out what's necessary to get the maximum performance out of a horse. They do have very unique and very individual personalities. We have one that eats pizza. We have one that drinks Coca-Cola. Most cases, you try to get into their heads and you try to figure out what it is that they're missing. And 
So, I mean, it, it's just a matter of trying to figure out what makes them tick. The wager is the final measure of horse and handler odds and fate. If you're game, the window's open. Call your bets and don't be late. What I have to try to do is put myself in the place of the public because what a morning line is, is a prediction of what you think the public is going to do. Everybody looks for a little something different and weighs the factors differently. Some people uh, will go for drivers above everything. Others will favor post position as being paramount. Others think that the horse's race record is the most important. I think it's, it's a combination of a lot of things to making a good selection. Uh, it's all like parts of a puzzle. Often, it's harder to predict what the public's going to do than it is to predict what the horses are going to do. The public isn't always right. They're, they're, they have a great record. Uh, we're running about 42% winning favorites here, but you got to remember there's another 58% that aren't winning favorites. This is one of the exciting things about racing. When you come to the track, you get to shop for the odds you want. And if you think that that 30 to 1 shot has a better chance than that, well, then you can go to the window and support them, and you'll be rewarded with a with a $62 winner if you're right. When the horse is tight and ready, when the racing time is right, who gives wings to hooves in motion? Who can urge the will to fight? Well, the Pacers, they're uh, right front and right hind move in unison. 99% of them wear hobbles to keep them on stride. Trotters uh, are their right front and left hind move in unison. They're a diagonally gated horse. My favorite category is fast. I'm a firm believer in using the odds boards as a handicapper. And uh, I've got a lot of respect for what the public feels. If, if a horse is bet down favorite, there's, there's a reason for that. And, and that's something that I'll factor in. And if a horse is 90 to 1, that tells me he doesn't belong in that class. And it's uh, a horse that you certainly wouldn't want to follow for risk of being blocked in. I come up with a plan of what I think I'll do at the gate, but the key is to be adaptable. You can make all the plans in the world, but once you swing in behind that gate, they're subject to change, and, and you have to be able to, to adapt to that change or you're not going to be successful. And you definitely have a feel for the, your competitors because they have tendencies, and you know which drivers are going to make uh, different moves. Horses are different. Some have a lackluster attitude when it comes to passing other horses. So you can be following in and, and the horse is right on the bit and feels like he's going to pace right by. And as soon as you take him out, he's content just to hang there and won't give you his full effort. Other horses will be content to follow along and won't even pick up the bit and you won't think we'll go at any. And if you take them out, that's when they'll kick in and, and want to pass. Them. get a special feeling no matter how many races you won, you how many big purses you won. The winning, it's very addicting. And there's, there's just no other feeling like it. Whether you're the, the driver, the trainer, the owner, or the caretaker, you ask them and there's just nothing like it. 